Hey all, and welcome back to Puzzle Dutch Gaming and a new video on the channel telling you everything you need to know about finding and killing King of the Mist for your last two ascendancy points in Path of Exile. Don't get this confused with the King of the Mist that you can find in the campaign and while you're doing early mapping. The one that just you come across in the forest is not the one you need to kill. King of the Mist has his own arena that you have to activate a portal to and go in to fight him. That's what we're going to cover off today, how best to find it, what to do when you get there, and then how to make sure you complete the mechanic successfully. So, as I said, it's 81 item level plus, so it has to be in T14 maps and above. You don't need to make your map rare. Map mods have no significance to whether you find the King of the Mist or not. However, if you do want to roll your maps because it's quite rare that you find him and you want to juice your map, once you get into the stronghold, map mods don't matter because it's a separate instance, so you can safely juice the maps as much as you want. They won't have any effect on the boss fight. Another tip, if you do find it, is you can portal out of the forest. You will lose any wisps that you've got, what this allows you to do is maybe if you have a boss set up, you can get some different flasks, change your pantheons, do anything you want to prepare for that fight before you go back in. The fight is not difficult. There's not many mechanics. Nothing he does causes a lot of damage. The only danger in the fight is degens. Everything else is very, very manageable. Now, the worst similarity is about where he spawns, and that is that it's normally in a room that's connected directly to your starting point. And I think the reason is GGG want people to find this boss if it's in your instance. It would be really unfair if you could go left or right in the forest and the boss is all the way at one end and you go the other way, you're never going to find him. So you can be safe in the knowledge, I think, that it's going to be in one of the connected rooms to the starting point. Now, it might not be easy to find because the narrow corridors that wind, they're really dark. And the way that the arenas work is they're a big, expansive area, but they have a tiny little narrow passage that goes into it and it can be a bit awkward to find them. However, once you do go in, the whole area will illuminate so you'll know you've got it. It will be a dark purple color. It's exactly the same color as the corpse fender, which can really troll you when you're looking for this boss and you keep coming across the corpse fender because you see the purple hue and you think you found the boss fight and you haven't. It also very rarely, or in fact, I've never had it in a thick trail of wisps. Wisps, if there's lots of them, tend to go to either a vendor or some sort of encounter connected directly to that color. King of the Mist hence the name, is always in darkness. There may be a trail of wisps going there, like really few number of wisps, but he's never going to be through a huge trail. And unlike all the other mechanics that have a big trail of wisps around for you to collect, King of the Mist has nothing. It is just dark. So my tips would be, if he's not in the starting area, he's probably not there. It is RNG. I found him after five maps between, and then it's been 40 maps. So I think it's around 25 to 30, but it is RNG. So how do you know what to do when you get there? You're going to get into the area and there's just three little totems. You simply click on them and it opens a portal into his arena. Once you go in here, pretty sure you can't portal out again. So if you need to prep, portal out, do your prep, come back and then go into the arena. The first phase, there's lots of different voice lines and I've tried to understand what he does with each voice line. We'll go through the two main mechanics first that are gonna be the things that will kill you. And that is stop and keep running. And he actually says, keep running and sort of stop it's not english but it sounds almost like stop but there's other ways you can identify it if he says stop there'll be a red circle underneath your character there will also be an icon in the buff bar with a red background if it's red that means stop if he says keep running your character will have a purple circle underneath him and the icon on your buff bar will have a green background so think of it as a traffic light which is the way i do as soon as i see something on my buff bar i quickly glance at it if the background is green, I keep running. If it's red, I stop. The time is eight seconds on these mechanics and I've tested it and I'm pretty sure the first three seconds are a grace period. And then once it gets to five, if you've not done what he wants you to do, then he's gonna inflict his punishment, which is making you stand still for the remainder of the timer. And if this is in the second phase, you're very realistically gonna die. There are other things that happened in the first phase, but nothing too deadly. Thorns, if he shouts that, he does like a slam attack, but it only does about 3,000 fizz from what I've experienced. So as long as you have that amount of HP, you should survive it. He sets off the annoying frogs that you can't kill that leave chaos when they hit you. So again, you've just got to keep an eye out for them and try and avoid them the best as you can. He says something like disappear or vanish, and then he literally just disappears and goes up to the top of a set of stairs and sits there and doesn't do anything. That's kind of it. The only other mechanic in the first section is there is a red blob that appears on the floor, or there might be two, little degen pools 
don't run over them. I don't know exactly what they do, but I have dropped dead in this fight with nothing anywhere near me. And I'm pretty sure it's because I walked over those too many times. So do not go over those. He does have a voice line where he says mark for death. And I wonder whether these have got something to do with it. But really, it's just a case of keep an arm red blobs on the floor. If he says keep running, you keep running. If he says stop, stop. One thing I would take into this fight is a flame dash. When he says stop, you cannot move. But blink skills are not movement technically. So you can actually use blink skills to get out the way of something. If you don't take a blink skill in and you have to stand still for five seconds, you're in the lap of the RNG gods as to whether you survive because you can't move because if you move, you're just going to get stunned anyway. So take a blink skill in to use sparingly if you need to move out of the way when you're standing still. Next, when he gets to about 40% health, he teleports you into a maze. The maze is very simple. Essentially, you have to find your way to the purple door to get out. You have no idea where it is, but luckily the blue glowing wisps do. All you need to do is follow these wisps. You don't have to be quick. You can take as long as you like. There's no time period where you're going to get killed. Just follow the wisps and make your way out of the maze. The reason it's important to follow them is if you go off track, you get these kind of like black bugs that appear and they cause a ridiculous amount of degen. Your health is going to go in about two seconds. There's one issue with this fight that I think is a glitch, and that is sometimes when you land into the maze, you are land into a pool of the degen bugs. So be aware Get ready with your life last and get ready to move to the first wisp. The wisp should only be a few feet away from your character. But if you're not paying attention and, you're, and you don't realize what's going on, you're going to be dead before you know it. So here's a clip here of me when I go in and you can see I automatically land on a pile of these bugs or smoke, whatever it is. And I have to be really quick on the life flask and move towards the wisp. Once you've got that first two seconds done, this bit is a piece of cake. And then we move on to the third and final phase where he changes form and he keeps his keep running and don't move mechanic, but he drops the voice lines. There are random voice lines, but I don't think they correlate to any of these. So you can't use these as an indicator as to what you need to do. So either look at the floor, is it purple, keep going, is it red, stop? Or I find it easier to just look at my buff bar and see if the background is green, traffic light, go, red, stop. And every time I've followed that, I've done the fight pretty simply. There is a effigy type mechanic in the fight. I don't know exactly what it does because it didn't do any damage to me, but I have quite good leech, which is why I say if you have no recovery, you might struggle a little bit. It looks like it's some sort of either mini reflect or the boss does damage to a totem, it does damage to you. It's one or the other. I got up to like two stacks, didn't cause too many issues. So I'll just try and stay away from both him and the totem in that phase. But this boss does not have a lot of health. You will kill him if you've got half decent DPS in about 10 to 15 seconds in the second phase. So it's not something where you're going to have minutes of mechanics to deal with. There are a couple of stages, I think, where you can't get his health any lower and it forces you to do something, but it's very quick. The worst thing about the second phase is there is a totem in the middle of the room and it puts this purple D general on the floor. It's very slow, slowly goes out towards the edge of the screen. When it reaches the edge of the screen, it starts again from the center. It is very, very heavy chaos damage over time and you cannot see it. With all the stuff going on, especially in POE nowadays, if you've got minions or projectiles or any sort of MTX on your character, you're not going to see these DGENs on the ground. You're just going to see them turn up in your bar every now and again, showing that you're taking chaos damage over time. As long as you stay near the boss and you keep hitting him and you have got some form of recovery, you should be okay. If you don't have any leech, or any life regen, and you've only got a life flask, you may struggle on this bit because it's very hard to see the degen. And that's kind of it. If you follow the move, don't move mechanic, you'll be through this in no time at all, and you'll be collecting your loot. The only last tip I would give is when you have killed him, make sure you move to a spot where there's no degen. I've seen a lot of people do this fight, killed him and stayed in the degen, and then he's not there to leech off of, and they've just died, so they haven't been able to collect their loot. Once you've completed that fight, you can then go and find your vendor and you can collect your last two points. That's kind of it for a walkthrough of the fight. So very simply, look for the nearest room to where you enter. The stronghold is likely to be one of those. When you go in, don't move. Keep moving mechanic is really all you need to pay attention to. When you go into the maze, watch out for the immediate degen. Find a wisp, follow them, get out the maze nice and simple. And then second phase, again... Keep running, don't move, and just watch out for the purple degen on the floor. This fight is frustrating because it's very RNG to when you can come across it. And I failed it quite a few times just so I could give you guys some footage and help you learn the fights. It was really frustrating finding it over and over again. So I wanted to give as much insight as I could to help you guys who haven't got there yet pass through with flying colors on the first time. 
Happy to answer any questions in the video comments. I don't know if I'll be able to answer them, but, but fire away if you've got any issues or queries. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and see you in the next one.